Hello, it's Koi, and welcome to the Eclectic Cottage. Thanks for joining me today. I am preparing to work on ephemera. Some more ephemera because I've added extra. I, I've added extra um, pages to my junk journal, extra signatures, and now I need more ephemera. And I was looking at this one. This is cute. It is from 1916, and it's um, an invitation to to the to the Rex Ball. He's the King of Carnival in New Orleans on March March 7th. If you know a little bit about um, New Orleans, or even if you don't, let me tell you. Um, the Rex is kind of a, the carnival mascot. He's the king of the, of the carnival. And this is a tradition that's been going on since, uh, 1872 when there was a visiting Grand Duke from Russia. And this was originally started in his honor. Okay. So... You know, every year there is a Carnival Rex, King of the Carnival. And this was an invitation probably to one of their balls from 1916. And I'm looking at it, and I think that it probably is about the size, yep, like probably almost exactly the size of a... Um, CD envelope sleeve, and I thought maybe we would make a shaker. Let's see what we have here. I don't think we have any purple. It's okay, because there's plenty of purple here. But I have green and yellow. How about yellow? Or green. Let's see if the green shows up well with the purple. Okay, so we can go either way, either with the, the green or with the yellow. And I thought we would just make a little shaker envelope for no real purpose, just for a little decoration, something fun in our Mardi Gras journal. I turn the camera on, bring you along with me. If you have CD, if you have CD envelopes, these, when I found them, I, I got them... Um, a couple of years ago at thrift store and there were I think it was pretty much a full box how many's in here 50 a 50 there's 50 of them and I've used some over time but there's still plenty left um, when I got them and they were these bright colors I thought good lord I wanted white ones I thought huh what will I ever use those bright colors for? But yellow is my favorite color. Yellow goes with nearly everything. And I probably use the yellow ones first. Huh. You see how the glue is kind of showing through from where they made it? I don't know if you can see that on camera. Anyway, I've never noticed that before. But I thought, let's cut this out and let's see how much trimming it's going to be required. All right, so how are all of you doing today? I hope you're doing well and crafting. If you're crafty, I hope you are you have something fun going on on your desk. And if you're just relaxing... Come on in, have a seat, join us for a, few, for a bit. Let's see, that's probably too exact. Okay, so let's cut a little sliver off the sides, just so it fits into the envelope. Uh, I don't think the sides are gonna show, so and no real urgency for them to be perfectly 
This is right side up. Let's see how it looks in the green one. Okay, cute. I probably would want to go with yellow. Yellow is just my favorite color. It's so happy, it's so cheery, and it mixes with anything. It mixes with all the colors. Yellow blends with cool colors, it blends with warm colors, and it's just cheerful and happy. How does that look? A little brighter? Excuse my hands, I've been working with clay this morning. All right, and I wish I had some big um, glitter. I don't want that to open. Maybe I should put some, maybe I should try and glue this thing. Let's see if that's gonna work. I don't want glitter or anything falling out of that. See that little thumb hole? That would not be good. Let's see if gluing is gonna do anything for this. Or if I'm even gonna be able to slide it down in there once it's glued. Should help prevent. I could open the whole thing up and re glue it, but that hopefully it's not going to be necessary. Make sure I'm getting it right side up. Yep. I'm gonna get you all the way down there. Don't glue yet. All right, don't give me trouble. Oh, yeah, it's gluing sooner than I would like for it to. what happened, but we should be able to work it out. Why wouldn't that happen? Ah, ah, ah. That might be it. Aha! We did it. Okay, now we want to glue you in. Okay. Now we're talking. Now, I don't think that will come up. Where there's a will, there's a way. All right, that is very cute, very. And I don't have any big, colorful glitter. So I'm thinking I might just use this crystal glitter that is not little and it is very messy if it escapes. So I don't want any escaped glitter. All right, so some glitter. Is that too much? Oh no. Is that glue? Maybe it's not. All right, so glitter. And I also have some little 
white beads. It might be fun in there. I think that's too much glitter. Just what I didn't want to do is have to remove some, make any kind of mess. Glitter has a way of hanging around long after the project is over. All right, maybe that's better. All right, so some glitter. Let me close you up to prevent escapees. I wish I had something besides white. But white is what I have. Let's see how we make out. All right, that's kind of bugging me. Let's see if we have a wet wipe. I don't know that it's glue on the front, but it looks, that's what it looks like. And I hate to put anything damp in there glitter to stick to it. I could be asking for more trouble than this is going to be worth, but I'm going to try and wipe that off. Okay. Okay, that's why that was all wrapped up in the Ziploc bag. Now I have escapees in the form of little white beads. I don't have to vacuum them up. Put a thread in there. I don't want the thread in there. cute. Did I try and put a few more of those A-wall beads in there? Where is Anna? Yeah, let's see. I don't want to pick up any threads or other foreign objects. All right, I'll get most of them up and the rest I will just scoop right into the trash. Okay. All right, thanks for bearing with me. <laughs> I would rather beads than the glitter. I'd rather having the little beads than the glitter. Where'd that Ziploc bag go? I'm just gonna put them in there so they don't end up on the floor. Okay. Put you back in here. Um, 
there is not a good top on that. I think that was in with a, a bunch of stuff that I bought at a thrift store. And when I untightened the lid, it disintegrated. Who knows how old it is? All right. I was wondering why it was tied up like this. It's, I've never used them before. Okay. Now let's glue down our flap. Seal this guy up and see what we've got. tweezers go. Piece of something. Where'd that go? I see it. I think we're, I think we caught it in time. Piece of towel, paper towel. All right, let's try this again. Oh, it's cute. Okay, and there we go. Cute. All right, if you have some CD envelopes at home and they're white, you can always, you know, you can always paint them or what have you, but I was thinking, um, if you don't have them, maybe we could use our big hole punch. If you have a big hole punch, let's see, this is um, sunlit hole punch, three and a half inches. And it looks to be about the same size as the closure here. And how would we go about this? Let's see. Nope, that's not going to give enough. I think, I've, I think, let's try this. We would like it, our front to be five by five. So let's cut it five by five. This is in case you don't have a CD cover. And you would like to make one of these. So five. By five. Let's just try it and see if we can make our own. pretty sure that it would not work. It would not, you know, just to, just to put this in here and you would have a big, a big margin up here and a tiny one at the bottom. It wouldn't be even like this. So let's try it like this. Let's fold this in half. You're going to have a little crease in your paper, but that's okay. And
Let's put this into the about halfway mark. We want to have the same amount here as we do here, which we don't yet. All right, that might be a little closer. All right, let's just give this a try and see what we get. We're going to have it just... All right. I must have gone a little bit over, over half because I have a little bit of an apple look instead of a... There. Okay. All right. I think that's nice. Let's see what we need to do. You know, we have this circle that's kind of ovalish. <laughs> if we wanted to do something with it later, we'll just put that over with scraps. And our circle is more of an oval, but that's okay. It was user error, probably something that I did. I need a little desktop vacuum with those little, you seen those little ladybugs that people use on their desk to suck up all the little threads and, and crumbs. I need to get one of those. All right, bear with me a second. Let me just get this off the desk while I can. piece of acetate here. Now, you don't have to use acetate. You may have a roll of cellophane or um, packaging from, you know, from something you've received through the mail, Amazon, or something Tim Holtz. Use what you have. I'm going to use this piece of acetate because I have it. And... Let's cut this off to five inches. Let's get this approximately five by five. Five. That looks about right. All right, five by five. We can maybe trim it off a little bit. Let's see. Uh, okay, again, we do have this little crease from where we folded it in half, but that's okay. It wasn't going to work any other way. So let's... Give this a bit of a trim. use Fabri-Tac. Not for any particular reason. I could use the art glitter glue or even probably glue stick, but I'm going to go with Fabri-Tac for whatever reason here. Here. And then... Just here. <coughs> I 
and let's see what we get. All right, I don't want the glue to smear into the window. So I'm going to brush from the inside out. not want to have happen. Okay. New. No. That was not it. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, that's something. All right, now, for the other half, we do want to have a flap. So, let's trim this one more like here. Here. And You can be a lot more precise than I am. I am just somewhat winging it here. To make sure that we're not losing any space inside there, let's use, I wish I had yellow. Oh, there's yellow. It's yellow. All right, we're going to make some little gussets so we don't lose any of our real estate in there. Now we could, uh, let me make one of these for my personal journal because I think I printed that little Rex thing two times. Did I? Rex, Rex, Rex. Pretty sure I printed it twice. Not intentionally, but hmm. All right.
What else? Do, oh, here it is. Here it is. Thinking since the thing is open, it might be easier for us to put this on. did not have this fully planned out. So this is really not a tutorial. It's just a kind of craft with me. This is what I'm doing in my art room today. And maybe, maybe, maybe you might like to make one too, but I am not claiming to be the expert as this is the first time I'm trying this. How we do. All right, let's put our gussets on. We don't even need gussets if we, since we don't have to put this in there. It's already in there. We don't really have to have a gusset. As we're going on acetate. We're going to use Fabri-Tac. Oh boy, here we go with our our glue and our let's let the glue this glue dry. Here we go with our 
beads in our glitter again. And then we're just going to fold this thing down as a flap in the front. This is the first time I've done this, so I did not expect perfection. I did not get perfection. And I will say this, if I were going to do it again, I would put the flap on the front part instead of the back part. But this time it's going to be on the front. I'm going to angle the little corners here. prevent it from gluing together while it's drying. <laughs> Scissors will do. All right, doesn't take Fabri-Tac long to dry. All right, here we go. A little glitter. <laughs> A couple beads. I could skip the beads prevent the catastrophe that could happen. If you have some big chunky um, glitter, it might be nicer than this tiny glitter. But it's what I had, so it's what I'm using. I made one of these in July for my Christmas in July um, Mexican journal. And I had big chunky Christmas red, red and green uh, oh, green. Green might have worked. I probably still have that in with the Christmas stuff. Anyway, it looked real cute with the big, the big chunky glitter. So again, if I were doing this over, I would probably make the, the longer side the front so it would flip over to the back instead of the back flipping over to the front. But all in all, I think it's cute. Let's see how it compares with the original. Very good. There you have it. Okay. Let me know if you decide to make one of these and um, if you want to show us what it looks like, come on over to the Eclectic Cottage Cafe on Facebook join our Facebook group and just post your pictures so that we can share and learn and um, inspire each other uh, along the way. I'm seriously thinking about doing um, the 100 day project where we're working on a little something every day. I don't know if I'll be able to video every day, but I'm definitely um, considering at least, you know, for myself doing the 100 day project. Let me know if any of you are thinking about doing that. And maybe we can throw around some ideas. I, I think it's like mid-February or something when that starts. Um, I'll have to look in and, 
and find more details if any of you are going to be interested. Um, if you already know the answers, maybe you can um, let us know in the comments. Very good. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for joining me in the art room today, keeping me company, and making our little CD case shaker card um, with our Rex from 1916 invitation and also from doing our handmade do-it-yourself um, little project. I think it turned out quite cute. All right, again, thank you for joining me. Have a good evening. Bye.